Our theme today is forgiveness. It's one that often comes up at camp, especially as we talk about um, painful relationships in our lives or ways that we might be praying or things that we need from God. And often when we pray for forgiveness, we want it to be instant. Anybody? <laughs> right here, right now, just handle it, God. I would like that forgiveness right now, which makes perfect sense. We want to be free of the anger and the hurt and the resentment that comes from the hurts in our relationships. But the burden of forgiveness can take time and patience and persistence. As we begin our service today, we will invite the Holy Spirit to be active among us, to speak to us about who needs forgiveness in our lives. It might be a friend or a family member. It might be a neighbor or a colleague. It might be forgiving ourselves. It might even be forgiving God. We can feel hurt, betrayed, or let down in any of those relationships. On your bulletin, you should have a little slip of paper. We will be using those later in the service. They are not for your grocery list. And you will not be passing them or sharing them with anyone. This is for you to use. And we are inviting you to write the names of people or situations where you know you need forgiveness. Or you know they need forgiveness from you. However, that might work. Um, you can write all down one side. You can write on the back side. You can write over top of it. Um, it doesn't have to be legible. You can use initials if you're worried about who's on your left or your right. And I will tell you that personally, I'm often surprised when I do this exercise for who God brings to mind. There's always somebody obvious. And every time I have signed up to preach about forgiveness, God reminds me in very concrete, we, we're, concrete ways the week before that it's not just a mental exercise, that it's not just good in theory, but it is a practice. God always puts in front of me the practice of forgiveness. I choose to preach about forgiveness very infrequently because of that. Um, but I'm also often surprised by who God brings to mind. Sometimes it's people who are way, way back. And I think I moved on from that. Or I've even moved on from them. And yet God brings them to mind. And then all of a sudden there's that, ugh kind of feeling. Yep, there's still anger there, or there's some resentment there, or there's the pain there. I might think, I thought I let go of that, or I, I thought I was past it. It's okay that forgiveness takes time. It's okay that it's a process for it. I would encourage you to write down whomever and whatever comes to mind and just allow God to use this as holy time. I also want to stress that um, forgiveness is an act of letting go of the anger, hurt, and resentment. And it is distinctive from reconciliation. Forgiveness is not the same as reconciliation. And to pray about forgiving someone is not necessarily to commit to being back in a relationship with them. Is that clear? To pray about forgiving someone is not to commit necessarily to being back in relationship with them. Sometimes we have really hurtful people in our lives. Sometimes we have really manipulative people in our lives. Sometimes we have people with terrible boundaries in our lives. And we aren't asking you to draw close today. We are asking you to talk to God about letting go of the anger, the hurt, and the resentment, and asking God for healing in its place. And we're going to save reconciliation for a whole other day. Two weeks from now, we're going to dive right into what it means to reconcile and what that work requires um, and what that discipline is. But for today, we're just going to focus on forgiveness. Let us pray. Holy and loving God. We ask you to join us for worship today. Shine your light on us. Send your Holy Spirit to guide and direct us. Reveal to us the situations and relationships in our lives that need healing and forgiveness. Help us surrender our pain to you. Speak life into us as the community called church. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
This morning's scripture comes from Colossians chapter 3, verses 12 through 15. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive one another if any of you has a grievance against anyone. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. And over all these virtues, put on love which binds them all together in perfect unity. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you were, you were called to peace. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I found that there are some topics in the faith that come with a bit of baggage. And forgiveness is one of those. That when we hear that we are called to forgive, some of us sort of balk at that. Not because we don't think it's important, not because we don't know that Jesus offers us grace and forgiveness so that we might forgive, but because sometimes forgiveness has been used against us. Anybody? We've been told in a problematic relationship, maybe an abusive one, you just need to forgive. Or better yet, you need to forgive and forgets, which for most of us translates to, you just need to forget about the fact that I did you wrong and move on without me changing my behavior, right? You need to forgive. You need to forgive and forget. You just need to let that go. Can I tell you a little secret? Because people say that the scriptures say forgive and forget. Do you know what the scriptures do not say? forgive and forget. They do talk a lot about forgiveness. It is key as part of our faith, but we, that forgive and forget isn't part of it. There's a different dynamic there. So I just want to name that for some of us, when we come to this topic of forgiveness, we're already on the struggle bus. So we're going to try and get off the struggle bus and move into the acceptance and see what God might do for us and in us. We're going to look at the scripture, today's scripture, which does say that we are called to forgive and to forgive in a particular way, which is to forgive as God has forgiven you, right? Forgive as God has forgiven you, which can sound like a simple reminder, right? Like forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us, right? We get that dynamic. And for some of us, it feels a little bit like a millstone around our neck. Because God is God and we are us. So how can we be expected to forgive at this level when we're on this level? It might seem impossible, aspirational maybe, but are we supposed to literally forgive in the same way that God forgives? It's a bit of a task for us. So before we get all the way there, I want us to pull back a little as we look at our scripture today. And remember, Colossians is an epistle. It's a letter. It's a letter to a church that was dealing with their own internal struggle. And Paul was their pastor writing to help them. And in writing to help them, we can assume that he is their pastor made some assumptions. Like that they, as the church, should and would be working to follow these new rules of Jesus. And, that, and I don't think that Paul was dealing with things like domestic or sexual violence. I don't think that within the church he was addressing murder or stealing or arson. Right? He was talking about everyday people problems. We know churches have issues. Right? 
We're human, we're prone to error, we see things our way and not everybody else's way. And every pastor needs to write their congregation or talk to their congregation about some of those issues that come out. So Paul's talking to his congregation, not dealing with those big, heavy, hard, impossible things. So when we talk about forgiveness, it's not that forgiveness isn't related to those, but we just need to understand it's not so casual here. And he is talking more directly about how we live in community. And it's not just related to forgiveness. He gives us other things that we're supposed to live into. Compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, patience, and love. Those are good things, right? When we hear those words, we often feel good things. When people do those things in our midst, it lifts us up. It brightens us up. It fills our hearts, right? Compassion. How many of us respond adversely to that one? We don't want any compassion or humility or kindness or patience or love. We want those, right? And we're just like, yes, please give me more of that. And then, because of that baggage, sometimes when it comes to forgiveness, we're like, mm, wait, who exactly are we talking about here? You have those people. As your pastor, I have no problem being transparent. I have those people. We all have those people. Or when we go, well, yeah, I should forgive them. Mm. They should figure out how to be better. <laughs> then I wouldn't have to forgive him so much. We have this struggle. It's who we are. But forgiveness is ranked right there with compassion and love and patience and kindness. They are good gifts and they are good gifts of the community. Paul wants us to do community and he knows that in doing community, it takes work. Compassion takes work, right? True compassion requires empathy for those really difficult people. For us to show kindness and compassion and grace, what do we have to do? Step outside of ourselves, look from their perspective, try and see from the other side, what are they thinking? Why would they respond to them? Why would they be doing things these ways? And then maybe if we can look from their perspective, we're not quite so hard hearted, right? These are disciplines. They take work and effort and forgiveness is the same. It takes work and effort. Most of us would like it to be, right? Especially when it's heading our way. Please forgive me now, <laughs> right? We don't want to be on the hook for any stretch of time. And we would like that peace that comes with forgiveness to be right now. But forgiveness is often a process. It takes time. I want to tell you a little bit about one of my processes, one that is probably formative in my adulthood. And one of my first church jobs... I was working with someone who was not easy to work with. Those people exist in the church too. And um, I have lots of not nice words for him. Words like misogynistic and micromanaging and insecure. He was impossible to work with. And I'm not a perfect person. And I would say I've been a pretty consistent personality in my adulthood, but the first time I ever sat down for a one-on-one -on -one with him, the first time, he told me I was selfish, self-promoting, and something else in that category. He didn't even know me. <laughs> and he had made all of these assumptions about me. And we struggled, and we got to work together over and over and over over again. And so I started praying for forgiveness, right? Because I've got this hard relationship. I don't even want to talk to this person. It is super challenging. Every time I turn around, he's got something else that's wrong with me, right? Not just wrong, but wrong with me. So I pray about forgiveness and I would work at it, right? Okay, I'm going to forgive him this way and I'm going to let go of this hurt and I'm going to set aside this thing and I'm going to put this away and I'm going to try and see it in a different light. And I would get this close this close to feeling like I was free of the anger and the hurt and the resentment. 
and that man would do it all over again. Right? And I'd, oh, I was so close. And so I'd pray and I'd set aside and I'd try and get there and I would do this thing. I would get so close. And he would do something else. And yeah, it was a hot mess. So multiple things happened. Um, but most of the advice that I got because of the place where I was in ministry and sort of vulnerability in the process was just sort of put your head down until you can get out. It wasn't come at it. It wasn't have a conversation. It wasn't any kind of anything that would be productive. Just put your head down and get yourself out. But I still had to work with him in that time. And so we came up against Lent. Lent's that 40-day period before Easter where often we give up something, right? Chocolate or wine or ice cream or exercise or, you know, whatever. Um, and I thought, I'm going to pray for forgiveness. I'm going to try and let go of the anger, the hurt, and the resentment. So every day in Lent, I'm going to pray for forgiveness with this man. So I was praying, and again, I'd, I'd feel really close, just even in my own process when something else would happen. And at one point in Lent, I prayed with my sister, asked her to pray with me. And so she said a prayer, and part of her prayer stuck with me in a really significant way. She said, God, may it be the kind of forgiveness that can only be attributed to you. May it be the kind of forgiveness that can only be attributed to you. And honestly, I didn't even know what that meant. I mean, theoretically, sure, but like, I, what kind of forgiveness can only be attributed to God? I had no idea. So I just keep praying my way through Lent, praying my way through Lent, praying my way through Lent. So it's Holy Week, and we have special services, and we're there for the service. I'm sitting old school, right? big chairs in the chancel. So I'm sitting in one of my big chairs and he's up front and he's leading worship and he's on this side of the congregation. I'm sort of looking this way and I don't remember what was happening in worship at that moment, but I turn and I look at him and I felt it. The forgiveness, the healing, the peace, all the anger, all the resentment, all the hurt, it was just gone in that moment. And I was very clear. I did not do that. That wasn't my power to forgive. That was God's power of forgiveness in my life. And it, it was a true gift to me. And, and the truth is, he wasn't transformed in that moment. He was his same self. And in April and May and June, all until I found a different church, we had more trouble. But you know what? God had healed that place of hurt for me with him, and I could separate myself from it differently. And when there was a new hurt, it didn't cut as deep because the old wounds were already healed, and there was that, like, scar tissue there, so I was better. And, and he's one of those where we, we weren't reconciled, but I did have forgiveness. And so I knew that it was that gift with him, but it's also become a gift with other people because I know that there is a gift of forgiveness that can only be attributed to God. There is the work of forgiveness that we can do ourselves, and there's miraculous forgiveness that happens here and there. But there is also a true gift of forgiveness that can only be attributed to God. And that's what I want us to focus on this morning, is the forgiveness that we want and need. Maybe the relationship where we keep trying and we keep hitting a wall or that person that we just don't even want to engage with because it's so fraught. I want us to ask for God to give us a gift of true healing that we could just let those emotions go. And like I said early, we'll come back to the question of whether we can be reconciled and repaired in the relationship just today, just today, that we might have that gift of forgiveness that only God can offer. So in a minute, I'm going to invite Matthew to come up. He's going to start playing, and I'll invite you to come up when you're ready. You may want to pray for a little bit first. You may want to take your time. You might want to be first in line, whatever works for you. Um, Bring your paper, and it could be blank. It could be truly symbolic. You could have 45 names on here. You could have one on here. You could have two on here. You might have just initials. You might have a situation. Um, I want you to come, and you can put the whole paper in. Or you may need to sort of go one at a time. God, 
I need you to help me forgive myself. God, I need you to help me forgive this friend that I'm really struggling with. God, I need you to help me forgive the systems and the people that are part of systems that are making me absolutely bananas right now. It may be that you want to just crumple it up and put it in like that. That's totally fine. However you want to come, you are invited to come. I'm going to make the water a little bit more front and center for you. Um, for some of us, it's helpful to do more than just the paper. You might want to sort of make the stirring your prayer, right? God, help me to feel your work in my life. Help me to experience your healing grace in me. And you can just give that water a stir. If you want a towel, there's one here for that. And I also know that, you know, dealing with forgiveness and praying about forgiveness can be pretty painful for us. It brings up some pain from relationships. And so if you're feeling like maybe you need a little something extra, I'm going to have my mic off. I have some, um, it's called Balm of Gilead. It just has olive oil and poplar bud and basil. If you would like an anointing and a prayer, just let me know. If you want just a prayer, just say, don't do the anointing. You can just pray for me and I'm happy to do that. So as Matthew plays, just take your time. When you feel ready to come up, come on up. And if you want prayer, just step to the side um, and I'm happy to pray with you. Yeah. Look and watch and see how the healing waters of God do something powerful and mysterious. Taking away the words and the names that we have written, offering in their place grace and forgiveness and new life. For some of us and some of our wounds, there's extra stirring. That's the process of prayer. Patience and endurance and perseverance are part of the story. For each of us, may God pour out the gifts of heaven. May we be convicted and sure of a forgiveness that can only be attributed to God. In the name of Jesus the Christ, we pray. Amen.